Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here. It is the Earthmaster on this Wednesday, about 11.03 a.m. California time, September 18th, 2024 is the date. Seismograph stations out here look calm across the world for now. A little spike of an earthquake on Petrolia uh, earlier this morning. Uh, we saw another 4.2 earthquake here across the area of the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now this region here uh, has uh, seen quite a bit of earthquake activity, uh, a lot more than what the USGS is stating here. I'll show you the uh, Earthquakes Canada model here in just a second. The largest quake so far in the sequence of activity is a 6.5 that kicked off on the 15th of April of uh, this month, September. A couple other earthquakes being reported, including that 4.2 at 5 o'clock this morning. This one in the same location as at 6.5. But if we go over here and look at the Earthquakes Canada map here, we can observe here that we've seen a little bit more than what the USGS is showing. And um, I'd say a lot more, right? Over the past week in the orange circles here showing some of the earthquake activity, there's the 6.5. Now, these folks have the earthquake positioned a little bit further to the west here than what the USGS is showing. The USGS showing that uh, closer to, to the uh, northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, which starts right about here and uh, extends further south, of course, to northern California. That's a mega subduction zone area capable of a mega quake up in the uh, 9.0 range and higher. And uh, it's been a little while since we've seen any major movement out here. Last major full rupture was back in 1700, with, which uh, ultimately produced a Pacific-wide tsunami, as documented in um, uh, historical documents over there across Japan. So, looking at this model here, shows uh, some various magnitudes. Again, the largest one is 6.5. A bunch of other fours in there as well. Now, the question is, uh, is this leading to something bigger, or is this just maybe some adjustment going on out here, as we've seen all across the area of the West Coast recently? Here's the last, uh, well, I pulled up pretty much everything USGS has on this area in terms of 6.0 and above magnitude earthquakes. Now, the last one in this region was a 6.3, but that's a little bit further south here into this uh, basin region back in 2019. Uh, another six-pointer in that same region a day prior uh, for another six-pointer. And in fact, there it looks like they had three six-pointers within uh, one day of, of each other back in 2019. A little bit of activity stirring up there for sure. Uh, and then a 6.2 back in July 2019. So the question is, what's the largest magnitude out here aside from the Cascadia, right? These are uh, definitely some strained quakes or strained area and we're seeing the uptick in quakes here the largest magnitude uh, at least within this region is going to be the 7.5 earthquake back in 1929 uh, 1970 7.4 so they can get uh, a little bit larger up here in terms of the uh, earthquake sequences aside from a rupture along the Cascadia I don't think any of these were associated specifically you know, with a decent rupture here across the northern end of the Cascadia. There was a handful of uh, quakes here, 1942, 1976, and then more recently our 6.5 here is at the northern end of the Cascadia. Uh, but again, this area capable of producing much more, even if it were to rupture in segments out here. Uh, definitely would see a, a little bit larger earthquake. Uh, so we're just kind of keeping an eye on it right now uh, with that swarm of activity stirring up out there. Again, a little bit more activity on the Earthquakes Canada map than what's showing up here on the USGS side of things. As far as the West Coast goes, here's some activity from yesterday. A couple twos and threes out there at the southern end of the Gorda Plate along the Mendocino Fault. Which is uh, just a new name for the San Andreas Fault here once it gets up past the northern segment. Um, nothing above 2.5 here today. Most of this from yesterday up here. So generally smaller microquake activity out here across California for now. No uptick across Southern California, but we've seen this in the past here. We'll go a, 
a couple days here of quietness, and then things will start to kick back up here. That's been the uh, story over the past two months across Southern California. So don't let these little quiet days fool you. A little bit of swarming up here across the Utah area, uh, right around the study area. This region um, has seen a lot of earthquake activity out here over the last few months, specifically in this region, the Bluebell study area. And um, not for sure exactly what's out there. I guess there's uh, some type of uh, mining out here, potentially. I don't know exactly. I've gotten a few... Uh, emails regarding the uh, activity or at least what's going on out here in terms of uh, human activities but uncertain on uh, specifically what's happening out here I've tried to uh, get a hold of the USGS as well and ask them about why we're seeing so many swarms out here in this area I don't think it's volcanic in nature but hey you never know all right uh, back in out of here Yellowstone National Park a handful of smaller quakes up there today and uh, a few from yesterday as well. Let's double check the um, YMC station. This is um, updated, definitely updated here it looks like. A couple earthquakes there from yesterday on the map. Maybe a couple smaller ones here from today. I'm giving a break from the Yellowstone overview site. I've been getting a certificate error on that page, so I don't know what's going on with it. I don't want to risk my computer uh you know i don't want to have any attackers or hackers after me if i'm visiting these weird sites for some reason i'm just getting a warning on it whenever i click on it so i'm going to avoid it take that warning there with a with um with a little caution for sure texas area oil fields getting hit here mainly from yesterday there's a handful of earthquakes out here mainly ones from today new madrid seismic zone showing some activity just after midnight local time in California time that is 2.0 and a 1.6 New Madrid seismic zone right that's a area obviously of some concern they they had a uh, a few large earthquakes back in the early 1800s 1811 1812 uh, saw a couple upper seven magnitudes here and uh, shook a whole lot of the eastern portion of the country now, whether there's enough steam built up there for a large earthquake uh, remains to be seen. 1811 till, you know, 2011 here. 200 years, and then add on the years that we have uh, since then. So a little bit of strain has built up there. We'll keep an eye on it. That would be completely devastating for the area. In fact, any large earthquake that has historically been documented out here uh, in our in our advancement as a civilization here, our infrastructure has been built up and we've populated the land. You know, any large earthquake would set us back in that region for uh, a period of time. We've been uh, fairly quiet out here in terms of large-scale earthquake activity, but it's not always going to be the case. That's a, that's a fact. Natural hazards and disasters here are quite common, but in our recent generation, pretty quiet. 4.7 south of Panama, just after midnight here, a little 4.7. Not a big earthquake. A couple of smaller earthquakes adjusting over here across the Puerto Rico Trench. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, Hawaii, toning down slightly. Um, let's see what we got for the current eruption status out here, uh, where the volcano is still sitting at an orange and watch level. Uh, current update here was put out yesterday, so no new update on the volcano or the eruption. Let me see if we can spot anything on the webcams out there from the U.S. GS site. Summit cams, probably nothing going on up there at the summit. Looks fairly quiet aside from uh, volcanic gases that seep through the tiniest cracks there at Lava Lake, which has been doing for quite a while. Um, I am not seeing anything visible out there on the horizon. Eastern rift zone here. Should have been r back over here, but it looks a little foggy out there again. Hard to say if we're uh, still seeing the eruption or not. We'll have to wait for the um, latest update from the USGS because I'm not seeing anything showing up there on the 
uh, webcam imagery. Uh, and earthquake activity has uh, backed off here quite a bit. The current ongoing eruption or the last verified eruption here from yesterday is right in this area right here. There's the most recent area. Um, and earthquake activity has really dropped off. Let me see what we got. Um, a handful of earthquakes out. There's some very small spiky ones. A um, little uncertain, though, on how much magma has been depleted from the area below. I don't think... Um, I don't think it's a large amount, so obviously this is probably not over. Unfortunately, there's no tilt meter station specifically in this area. The latest or the new, the closest one is going to be back over here towards the upper east rift zone. And a little hard to tell when most of our activity is uh, much further here to the east. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on um, anything that changes out there. Still at a watch in the orange level, though, due to the ongoing uh, eruption activity. New Zealand, a couple threes popping up down here. 5.7 along the Kermadec Trench, fairly new earthquake. And uh, fairly shallow, 21 miles deep here. That is probably going to be the largest earthquake so far here in the last 24 hours and today, that is. 5.7, striking about 5 o'clock a.m. California time. Aside from that, mostly... Um, Typical movement out here across Taiwan, Taiwan southward into the uh, Philippines area. Very um, common to see earthquake activity like that. Threes and fours out there today. A little cluster from yesterday along the Java Trench. Not a whole lot here across Japan. A little 4.8 Izu Trench area, but uh, not a whole lot going on here today. 5.2 off the coast of Madagascar area from yesterday. Yesterday quake there in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And uh, it looks a little slow out here. Aside from some movement up north and that 5.7 along the Kermadec Trench. Although, if you look down here, see this is why I like to use the Earthquake 3D Globe for the uh, EMSC model. A um, couple threes stirring up down here south of California along the Baja California area. Now that could be a sign here happening right about in this area. Could be a sign that we may be watching for some elevated activity up north. Um, looks like some newer and older quake activity down here. So we'll definitely keep an eye there on Southern California. As I mentioned, it, it goes through these little phases here of uptick and a couple days of quietness. So I think we're in that little lull of activity for now. Space weather activity definitely calmed down and currently sitting in a lull as well. Not seen a whole lot of auroras for now. No major CMEs have been Earth-directed at all since the uh, previous one where we've seen a uh, KP index up around the 8 range G4 class storm here a couple nights back. Goodness. Uh, current sunspot regions out here. 3825 is the culprit of that recent X-flare and solar storm that we saw a couple nights back. Notice a, a core split here. Um, indicated of some decay within that sunspot. It is currently facing the Earth directly, uh, but it, I'm not really expecting much from this sunspot anymore. Unless it gets its act together and starts gearing back up and strengthening, but uh, right now it's just kind of sitting there disorganized. Back around the eastern limb, not a whole lot. A couple of measly sunspots there that are really not capable of producing anything other than maybe a sea flare. 99% chance for C flare. M flare has dropped to 55. X flare down to 10% chance or so. Nothing major in the Aurora forecast here, folks. Far as any major um, asteroids go here in the near term, let's go ahead and see what we got. Next five. Where did we go? Are we here? Do we have any asteroid approaches here? It looks a little odd. What's going on here? And normally, this uh, should have loaded. Not for sure what's going on here, but uh, next five approaches appear to be offline. Let me copy that and paste it over here, see if... Uh, 
See if it's just maybe my browser. No. Something's going on. Yeah, it looks like they are uh, offline or maybe doing some work. So we'll have to check back on that. But uh, nothing's showing up there on the asteroid watch. All right. Uh, severe weather activity here today. Mainly limited to, uh, well, a couple states up here, a few different states. Slight risk category for tornado activity in the green. Wind and a little bit of hail threat in there as well. Looks like South Dakota area, Iowa, Nebraska. Uh, yeah, a little bit of movement out there that uh, could produce some severe weather. Aside from that, mostly uh, thunderstorm activity elsewhere, general thunderstorm activity. Even out here across my neck of the woods, a little chance for some thunderstorms. Not really expecting much, but it will take any rain. It looks like next week here, or after, after today, we're going to be back in the 90s and even up around 102 again as we head towards the weekend. Not... Uh, Uh, not looking at uh, anything major coming in for a pattern change, so I'm really not looking forward to that heat. Uh, tropical system may be down here uh, next week. I know a lot of uh, big channel names out here have been looking at this. Again, that's a ways out, but the models are forecasting some type of tropical disturbance down there towards the end of next week. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. It's a little early um, you know, to make a uh, complete judgment call on that but uh, either way most of the models have been continuous here that there uh, some some type of tropical system in there all right seismograph stations are quiet for now we'll continue to keep an eye on things we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on folks enjoy your wednesday <laughs> 